Hi, everybody, and welcome to Ivy English. I'm Karen, and I'm Chris Gorski. Today is September third, and we're on page twelve in your magazines. And today we're going to hear about an incredible animal. Well, we're talking about the incredible giraffe. It's one of those animals that I suppose we all love and wonder about as a kid. It's a pretty unique creature. That's right. So, what unique things are there about the giraffe? We're going to find out about some of them today in today's article. So, here we go. The incredible giraffe. The giraffe is an iconic animal found on the savannas of Africa. They appear everywhere, from zoos and theme parks to cartoons and even brand logos. From their distinctive long necks to their unique patterns of spots, giraffes are one of the world's most recognizable animals. But this very familiar creature still has surprises in store. The first thing people notice about giraffes is, of course, their necks. They use these long necks to collect leaves from high up on trees, usually with the help of their extra long, flexible tongues. In fact, an adult male giraffe can grow to be up to 5.3 meters tall. And their tongues can be over 50 centimeters in length. Despite their incredible height, however, giraffes have the same number of bones in their necks as humans do in their much shorter necks. It's just that each bone is a lot longer in giraffes than in other animals. Though giraffes' long necks help them gather food, the extra long bones inside mean that a giraffe's neck is not very flexible. This makes it very awkward for them to drink, but since they get most of their water from the leaves they eat, giraffes only need a drink every few days. And to prevent too much blood from rushing to their brains when they bend down for water, their jugular veins, which carry blood back to the heart, have one-way valves that keep blood from flowing in the wrong direction. Male giraffes will also use their neck in mating rituals. The males swing their heads at each other. Which is called necking to establish which is stronger. While the males rarely hurt each other, it can look quite violent until one of the males backs down. Okay, back to our title: the incredible giraffe. That's pretty easy. Incredible means it's hard to believe. That means it is so unusual. It's hard to believe that this is really true. For giraffe, pay attention to the spelling. So the most common spelling mistakes that native speakers make. Are usually one of two types. The first one is if it is a schwa, that means it's unstressed. We will often write it wrong. So, for example, if you have the word lemon, we don't say lemon; it's lemon. The o becomes an unstressed u.、Uh. So most people won't won't write l e m e n, but it's a kind of mistake that we could make in English. So if it is not a stressed vowel, we will sometimes get it wrong. The other thing is double letters, because if you double a letter in English, it does not change the pronunciation like it does in some languages, like Italian. So whenever you learn the spelling of a new word, pay attention to which letters are doubled and which are not. So giraffe, I can imagine a lot of native speakers writing g i. R R A F E. I can imagine a native speaker making this kind of mistake. So pay attention. There's one R, two Fs. Giraffe. So giraffe is a really interesting word, and I'm very, I, I'm always curious about where do words come from. And the giraffe has an especially interesting history. And I just want to share this really quickly. So in history, Europeans didn't actually believe that anything lived below the Sahara Desert in Africa. That's that giant desert in north northern Africa. And for a long time, it was like, well, nothing can live past that because the desert is too huge. Now, of course, we know that's not true. So a lot of these words about Africa and southern Africa actually come from the Middle East, and that's actually where giraffe comes from. In giraffe, in English, comes from the Arabic word zarefa. And Europeans knew about the giraffe sometime around the Middle Ages. That's after the Han Dynasty to about the the late Ming Dynasty era. So before this word giraffe became popular in English, people in England would call this animal the camel leopard. So what does zarefa mean? It actually means flute leg in Persian, which is the word the Arabics got it from. Flute meaning the musical instrument. Right?、Yeah. Okay, that's kind of unusual. All right, here's our first paragraph. The giraffe is an iconic animal found on the savannas of Africa. 
Iconic means it's representative. That means when you see this animal, you think immediately of what it represents. In this case, it's Africa. If you go on a safari or whatever in Africa, you'll think of giraffes. It's iconic. It's sort of one of our images of Africa. And the second unusual word is savanna. What is a savanna? Well, savanna is a kind of grassy forest where the canopy—that's the top layer of trees—the canopy doesn't fully cover. Think like when you go to the mountains or a forest in Taiwan. There are trees everywhere and plants and plants everywhere. But in a savanna. There is slightly less than average water, and so there's not a full growth of trees. There's lots of sunlight that can reach the ground, so it's not muddy. There are lots of grasses around too, and that's kind of what gives us that that interesting kind of、uh, prairie feeling、uh, that we are so we're so familiar with with Africa. I think where lions hide and giraffes will stand tall to be up above that grass. Okay, so that's savannas. Uh, the giraffe is an iconic animal found on the savannas of Africa. They appear everywhere, from zoos and theme parks to cartoons and even brand logos. So, if you're a little kid, you probably know about giraffes. They are just everywhere. They are so cute and so unusual. It's something that we learn about from a very early age. The construction in this sentence is really useful. So, we have from zoos and theme parks. To cartoons and even brand logos, it's a from A and B to C and D construction. You write that down, and when we're really wanting to emphasize or exaggerate something, this is a really good go-to phrase. That's right. And theme parks. First of all, note the stress. We don't say theme parks. We say theme parks. And second, just translate it directly into Chinese, and you get the Chinese. So the Chinese word for it certainly came from English. And a brand logo that means a little picture, or sometimes it's made of letters or words or whatever that represent a company. Logo actually comes from the word in English that's used to describe Chinese characters. So if you think of the Chinese word for wood, it kind of looks like a tree. Those are called logograms, and that's actually what the word logo comes from. This picture is an idea.、Um, another example might be、um, a dollar sign. And it goes back to Greek logos, which means word. From their distinctive long necks to their unique patterns of spots, giraffes are one of the world's most recognizable animals. Something is memorable, easy to remember, and easy to recognize when it's very different from other things in its class. And very few animals have such a long neck, so that's why we have a really, really clear impression and memory. Or Or knowledge of giraffes, they just are something that sticks in memory. So when we say they have unique spots, scientists genuinely mean unique. The patterns on a giraffe and other animals like zebras are actually one of a kind. No other animal will have an exact pattern just like them. And the giraffes use that to identify each other. They don't need to smell like a dog would. A giraffe can look at another giraffe. Recognize the spots and say, "Hey, you're my friend." And in fact, mother giraffes will not feed calves. That's a baby giraffe that is not their own. So, how does a mother giraffe know which giraffe is its baby? Well, it looks looks at its spots. You're not my baby. I won't feed you. Yeah, I read about if there's danger, the mother giraffe will only call to its own children, to its own little giraffes. But then the others will hear it, and everybody will run. Okay, our next sentence, but. This very familiar creature still has surprises in store. Now, in store does not mean it's in a shop where you can go buy it. In store means there are some things that we have not revealed yet that you're going to find out if you keep paying attention. This is related to the word storage. That's where you'll put things you're not using commonly. They're hidden away where other people won't see them. Okay, let's move on to the second paragraph. Our second paragraph begins. The first thing people notice about giraffes is, of course, their necks. Now, that's a very, very simple sentence to understand. But could you construct that sentence yourself without looking at anything? Pay attention to the structure of the sentence. The first thing that people notice about X is Y. That's a great sentence pattern. They use these long necks to collect leaves from high up on trees. Usually, with the help of their extra long, flexible tongues. That is something unique about giraffes as well. They have 
Well, I guess there are other animals that have long tongues, like hummingbirds. They have long tongues, but their tongues are really very long. They're black, purple in color, and they can reach out, and then that helps them collect leaves that they have. It's the, mainly what they eat. Their diet is almost only leaves. Although sometimes, if there's a dead animal sitting around, they'll kind of lick the lick the bones. Yeah, they they actually eat bones because they don't get enough calcium from the leaves they eat. So they'll actually chomp on animals' bones. So they're not really carnivores usually. They mostly eat leaves, but it's you know depending on if they have the opportunity, they will still lick these bones. Okay, so their long necks had developed to give them access to food that's up high. Other animals cannot reach up that high, so they have less competition. And their tongues are very flexible. That means that they can move around a lot. They use them sort of like we use our fingers. So. It's interesting that you point out the black and purple tongue, and people think that's really weird. But a giraffe is a big, heavy animal, and it only eats leaves, so it needs to eat a lot of leaves. That means its tongue is out in that hot sun for a very long time. The tongue is dark purple and black to prevent it from getting sunburn, and then it can't eat. It makes sense for evolution to give the giraffe a black tongue. Well, just the way human skin is. If you come originally from a very hot climate, you tend to have darker skin. Let's continue. In fact, an adult male giraffe can grow up to be five point three meters tall, and their tongues can be over fifty centimeters in length. Okay, and I think that's very straightforward, and that is very, very tall, and that's a very, very long tongue. I, I was just wondering. I, I just thought of this idea. What else is fifty centimeters in length? Like, I just want to put it like side by side to a giraffe's tongue. What could we compare it to? Sixty <laughs> centimeters. Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Yeah,、offhand. I can't think of anything offhand. I just want to like have like a picture of like what is the same length of a giraffe's tongue. Think of it yourself, <laughs> okay, listeners. I think you can figure that out. Despite their incredible height, however, giraffes have the same number of bones in their necks as humans do in their much shorter necks. And what struck me when I read this. Is that we often feel like we humans are so special, so different. We're apart from the rest of nature, but it's we're not, and that tells you a lot about、um, about evolution as well. If we're our structure is that similar to giraffes, we're just not so different from giraffes as we might like to think. Yeah, the only real difference between the neck of a giraffe and a human. It's just how heavy those bones are, and how they're long. Shaped, they're, they're shaped almost identically. There's seven bones in a giraffe's neck and seven bones in your neck. They're just heavier and longer. Yeah, that's right. Okay, the last sentence of the paragraph. It's just that each bone is a lot longer in giraffes than in other animals. Again, it's a very easy sentence to understand, but pay attention to the structure so that you could come up with an equally good sentence. It's just that a. Is a lot B in some in a kind of animal than in some other kind of animal. So let's just listen to it one more time. It's just that each bone is a lot longer in giraffes than in other animals. It's worth rereading several times and memorizing it so that you can come up with a similar sentence for us for some other situation. Okay, we're moving on to the last paragraph. Though giraffes' long necks help them gather food. The extra long bones inside mean that a giraffe's neck is not very flexible. Now we may not think of that problem. We think the neck is so long, and they, we kind of see、uh, giraffes twisting their necks with other giraffes. Sometimes we think, oh, it must be very flexible. But think about your own neck. You know, you're kind of limited what you can do with your neck. You can actually injure yourself if you're not careful. So they actually have to be very careful, and they're kind of restricted in some of their movements. Yeah, in fact, when a giraffe wants to drink water, because those necks are not as flexible as we think they are, they have to spread their legs really wide so that a giraffe can get low enough to drink water. Or sometimes they kneel, but that's a big deal. It's hard to get down and kneel, so they try to avoid that when they can. Which is, we're going to see it in the next sentence, which is why they mostly get their water from leaves. This makes it very awkward for them to drink, but since they get most of their water from the leaves they eat. Giraffes only need a drink every few days, so that means they must get quite a bit of liquid, quite a bit of water from the leaves that they eat. But they still need a little bit more. So every three days, they'll have to、uh, split the legs apart and then reach down. So I want to just mention two words that we're looking at here in paragraph two at the end of the second sentence. 
excuse me, in the middle of the second sentence, we have the word collect. And in paragraph three, in the first sentence, we have gather, which are two very similar words, collect and gather. Now, they are slightly different. When we're thinking about how we gather or collect some things, they are often used interchangeably. We can use them kind of use this word or use that word. Both are fine. They're synonyms. But in fact, there are some very slight differences. When we gather, there's a feeling that you're doing things kind of just willy nilly without a lot of care. Think of how a child might co- collect all their clothes in one big pile and shove them under their bed or <laughs> shove them in their drawer. What a great example. Now, if you're a farmer and you are hunting mushrooms, You can't just pick up any old mushroom you see. We won't gather mushrooms. We're going to collect mushrooms. We need to very carefully pick the correct mushroom or you could kill someone. So when you're a farmer, we'll say something like gather blueberries. You can get a whole bunch at once and that's fine. Or we'll collect mushrooms. Collecting mushrooms, we need to be more careful one by one. That's an excellent example. And keep in mind that early humans were hunter-gatherers. They went out there and just took back everything they could that was edible. And, and then tried to find out which food was edible and which one would kill you. I, <laughs> and yes, What a horrible life that must be. They Can often had this? to pay a high price for the ones that didn't work out. Just like the Chinese, um, the, the Chinese legend about Shen Nong and his going out and finding out which medicines and were just okay. just trying everything, right? <laughs> right. Okay. So let's go on to the next sentence. And to prevent too much blood from rushing to their brains when they bend down for water, their jugular veins, which carry blood back to the heart, have one-way valves that keep blood from flowing in the wrong direction. This is a very, very dense sentence. There are new words, and it has a lot of meaning in it. So please go slowly with this sentence to make sure you understand everything. I want to focus first on the word jugular. And jugular is used in one common expression in English, to go for the jugular. Exactly. What does that mean? So when we go for the jugular, we're going for a kill blow. This is, if you play video games, we'd call it a headshot. When you hit them one time, they're going to die. Because that is, as it describes in the sentence, it is the vein that carries blood from the brain back down to the heart. And if that one's broken, you're done for because it is so important. And Drafts need to be especially careful that they don't have blood going in the wrong direction. So when the blood starts going down away from the brain, the valve will close so the blood doesn't back up and go back into the head, and that could probably kill them. Now, your ancestors would be able to relate with this word very clearly. Now, in English, this J is very pronounced, jugular. But in a lot of Norwegian languages, these Js will be pronounced as Ys, so maybe jugular. Now, this jugular in Latin means your throat or your neck. And that's related to another word that we use with farmers. And that's a big wooden bar you put on the back of the neck of cows or oxen. And that's called a yoke. Y-O-K-E, yoke. And that's something that is used especially with oxen. You can't use it with a horse. You know, a horse needs a harness, needs something special. But that's what this um, piece of wood that you put across two oxen when you're plowing so that you can... uh, so that you can enable them to pull the plow. That's right. So yoke, jugular, these are all words related to the word neck and throat. And a valve is something that opens and closes according to need. So if it closes, it prevents the liquid from going back. That is a valve and from flowing in the wrong direction. I think the rest is pretty clear. Male giraffes will also use their neck in mating rituals. Now, this part is pretty interesting because very often animals that have something that really stands out that makes them special, it will often be used in mating. So, for example, for a moose, it's their enormous antlers. For a peacock, the male peacock, it's their enormous feathers. Sometimes or a lot of times when you find something that's very, very eye-catching, it's for mating. Okay, next sentence. The males swing their heads at each other which is called necking, to establish which is stronger. Now, I think necking made both Chris and me kind of smile a bit yeah. because it means something else for humans. Well, it is part of the mating ritual. <laughs> for humans as well. That. That's right. <laughs> uh, but I, I suppose I've been necking 
all wrong my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been you pushed it down a bit. <laughs> yeah. Necking, so, necking in English just means kissing and hugging, and then starting to get more sexually involved with each that's other. Right, kissing, kissing another person on the neck. It feels good, and so that's that's called necking as a slang word in English. The necking here clearly is something different. We're not smashing our necks and heads into each other to fight for a female. For giraffes, it is literal. So it will be described in the last sentence of today's article. While the males rarely hurt each other, it can look quite violent until one of the males backs down. Now, when we back down, we give up or quit, or we recognize that the other person is the winner. So, before we continue on to our question, there's a couple fast facts.、Um, so. Uh, here's another thing. Here are two things that giraffes do standing up. Number one is give birth. The first thing that you experience, or something that happens to you as a giraffe, is you fall about two meters. Giraffes give birth standing up. They do not kneel down because they might need to run away. And a giraffe is ready to stand up and walk in just about an hour. And lastly, for fast facts. A giraffe only sleeps for about, and this is true, five minutes and thirty seconds a day. Apparently, giraffes just don't need to sleep a lot. We're not sure why, and they need the least amount of sleep of any mammal. So, when the giraffe sleeps, where does it put that big head? Right on its butt. I didn't know that. I thought they would lean it on a high branch. <laughs> just kind of like set it up there. I think I, some of I them do sometimes. Hold its neck up, but I suppose it's more comfortable, right? Because it's got to be heavy to hold, right? That's right. That's why they lean it. I think sometimes they do because I have I read a book when I was in in、uh, grade school called How Animals Sleep. I think they do it sometimes. I didn't know the part about putting it on their butt. This makes me wonder about like big dinosaurs. Would they put their heads on their butt? Would they lean against trees? What what an interesting situation. We'll have to do a little more research on that one. Let's go to our questions number one. What does the author mean by the last sentence in the first paragraph? A giraffes can live in all sorts of harsh environments. Well, let's go read that last sentence of the first paragraph so we know what we're talking about. It is, but this very familiar creature still has surprises in store. Okay, so that doesn't mean that it has nothing to do with harsh environments. B giraffes are the most well-known animals in Africa. That doesn't fit either. C there are still many things we don't know about giraffes. And that does make sense because it says they still have surprises in store. That's the correct answer. And D, the image of giraffes has long been around in popular culture. The answer is C. Question number two: Which of the following statements is not true? A. Sometimes giraffes use their neck as a weapon. Well, that's called necking. We know that's true. And it's true because they are actually in a fight with another male. Usually, it's because they want both want a female. B. A giraffe's tongue is more flexible than its neck. That is also true. We learned how flexible it is to be able to pick all of those and collect all of those leaves. See, it might be a bit difficult for a giraffe to lower its head, which is also true. And D, each bone in a giraffe's neck is over fifty centimeters long. Here they are conflating two different things because it says that the thing that is fifty centimeters in length is the tongue. It is not. The length of each bone. So D is not true. Question number three: According to the passage, what is the function of the valves in the giraffe's jugular veins? A to pump more blood to the giraffe's brain. It doesn't mention that. B to regulate the flow of blood in a giraffe's neck. That's the correct answer. It's got these valves to keep the blood from not going back to the brain where it might cause damage. So B is the correct answer. C to make it easier for giraffes to bend their necks. No, and D to assist giraffes in stretching their necks to collect leaves. Also, no. no. All right, our last question. Which of the following fits best in the blank in the last paragraph? A the stronger male will have access to females to mate with. That's the correct answer. We can stop right there. That's right. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. 